The sounds of chittering keyboards and the low conversations are the first thing I notice as I step off the elevator. Catherine is once again on her phone with her daughter in the break room, chatting about another relationship issue. Joe is in there with her. I can tell he's just trying to enjoy a bit of time to himself as he nurses his coffee. Bill stands next to the water cooler in the early morning, waiting for anyone to meet his gaze to initiate conversation. My eyes never leave the ground. Christine is nice enough, though her bubbly personality is a lot to take in this early in the morning. Eric is reminiscing with Matt at his cubicle. They're talking about who won the big game the previous night. I slowly navigate through multiple aisles before finding my cubicle to the far back of the room. I sit down at my desk and log onto the computer to start my day. I sit there for hours, inputting number after number into various spreadsheets. This goes on until my watch beeps, informing me it's time for lunch. I walk back through the aisles and into the break room. Bill is speaking with Joe. His rough voice grates my ears as I enter. I can instantly tell Joe is uncomfortable. He can never seem to get some peace to himself. Luckily, my presence goes unnoticed, and I eat my sandwich in solitude off in the corner. I return to work and continue processing numbers for the remainder of my shift. The watch beeps a second time, signifying my shift has come to an end. One by one, we all slowly file out of the office like robots, before loading into that metal box to take us to the lobby. I stare out of the nearby window looking at the cityscape from the 38th floor of this building. The view is nice, and it gives me an excuse not to interact with anyone. I finally step into the elevator and ride it all the way to the bottom. Some of my coworkers give me a cursory goodbye and I return a nod before hopping into my car and driving back to my apartment. That is my work life, for better or for worse. Some of you might think it's a boring existence, and of course you'd be right. I'm that character that you've often seen in sitcoms and TV shows about offices. Not the one people make fun of, mind you, but the one in the back. One of the extras that nobody pays any mind. Somebody that never has anything happen to them ever. I don't mind it though, being the guy that no one interacts with. I'd rather just show up to work, do my shift, and head home for the night. I have been working as an analyst at this company for close to four years now. During those four years, the weirdest thing I've ever seen happen there was when Bill used the soda machine, and upon pressing a single button, all of the cans came pouring out of it. I remember it vividly because Bill likes to tell it to anyone who will listen, even if you've heard it multiple times before. That was until a few days ago when something else happened in that building. Something that I can't explain. It started out as just another average day. Nothing out of the ordinary had happened when I had gotten up, nor had anything happened on my commute to work. I was simply driving along, listening to the radio as my building grew in the distance. I parked in my usual spot and walked towards the entrance. After passing through the doors, I nodded to Peter, one of the security guards that monitors the lobby. I walked past him, rounding the corner to the elevators. Now, it's not unusual for me to ride the elevator by myself. There have been many days where I took the lone journey up to my floor. It only takes but a minute to arrive. I pressed the call button and waited. I glanced around, not seeing anyone in the vicinity. When I turned to look back at the elevator, it was sitting open before me. I thought it was odd that I hadn't heard its arrival, or the heavy metal door sliding open. I looked down at my watch and stepped inside. On the panel, I found the number 38 and pressed it, and waited as the door silently slid shut. I watched as the numbers above the door steadily increased. This is when things started to take a turn. The elevator reached the 38th floor, but it didn't stop. It passed the 39th, and then the 40th. It continued to rise higher and higher. I looked down at the panel to make sure I had pressed the correct button, and the little 38 was still illuminated. 
It hit the 50th floor. And then... It hit the 51st. When that happened, I felt a wave of panic and confusion wash over me. I stared at that glowing 51 on the screen in disbelief. There were only 50 floors to this building. The number didn't stop increasing, however. It continued climbing. Not sure of what I should do, I pressed the emergency stop button, but that did little to deter it. I thought I was having some sort of hallucination, or perhaps I was still at home dreaming. The elevator shuddered for a moment, before the momentum finally came to a rest. The small LED screen read 88. The 88th floor was where this elevator had decided to stop. I wondered about what would happen next. Would the elevator suddenly begin dropping from the sky? Would I wake up back in my own bed? As my mind raced, the door in front of me opened. There was a floor in front of me. I thought maybe the elevator had simply gone to the 50th floor and that the small screen was malfunctioning. I peeked out into the corridor and I could hardly see much in front of me. There were no lights on this floor. Everything was dark, just barely illuminated by the light within the elevator. From what I could see, it appeared to be just another floor to this building. There were obvious shapes of cubicles and other office decor spread about, though obviously untouched. I wondered if this had been some kind of prank, orchestrated by some of my coworkers, but quickly pushed that thought out of my mind. I tried pressing the lobby button in the elevator, but the light remained on the 38. After that, I began pressing all of the buttons to see if anything would happen, but nothing. The elevator was stationary, and the floor before me was beckoning. I stuck my head out and looked around. I called out to the darkened area asking if anyone was around, but nothing responded. Against my better judgment, I stepped out of the elevator and into the office space. Simply stepping onto that floor, I could feel the tension in the air shift around me. What was once a neutral space had now become one of impending danger. At least, that's how it felt to me. My eyes drifted from left to right. The whole area just seemed to be an abandoned office floor. As my eyes turned to focus on the path ahead of me, I saw something that made me freeze in mid-step. There was someone on the far end of the room, though it was too dark to see it clearly. I called out to them, asking where I was, but they didn't answer. Whoever it was was coming towards me. It stepped within the light of the elevator behind me. It was a man. He wore a torn up and disheveled business suit. Cuts and gashes marred his face. His wide eyes conveyed a desperate look of fear. He reached out a hand towards me and I wanted to back up, but my legs wouldn't move. A raspy voice left the man's lips. You have to go, he said, before it finds you. After he said that, I heard a noise coming from the back of the room. A sound like a growl emanated from the shadows. I could see two eyes like burning coals shimmering in the dark. I looked to the man once more and he just pointed past me before telling me to leave once again. I turned and glanced back at the elevator. When I turned back to offer to help the man out of this place, he was gone. There was no sign of him anywhere. The only thing left were those glowing red eyes which were much closer than before. I nervously shuffled backwards into the elevator and began pressing the buttons repeatedly. Nothing was happening. I could feel my breathing hasten as I struggled against the panel. In the room, the sound of growling echoed louder, almost as if it were a dog preparing to attack. I slammed my fist against the panel and the door finally shut. As soon as they did, a loud crash vibrated on the other side of the door. The numbers began to rapidly descend in the elevator, and it eventually came to a stop on the 38th floor. The door opened up once again and I saw all of my coworkers standing in front of the elevator. They all looked at me with confused expressions before Bill entered the elevator saying, Better late than never, huh? I asked him what was going on and he said that they were all heading home. 
that work was over for the day. I had never been more confused and happy to see my coworkers in my life. I thought I had been on that floor for only around 20 minutes or so, but apparently I had been up there for 8 hours straight. Most of my coworkers had just assumed I was sick and were surprised to find me in the elevator. Still, none of them asked me what I was doing in there, and I was silently grateful for that. Like I said before, I can't explain what happened that day. I don't know how it was possible to go 38 floors above the highest floor in this building. I don't know who that injured man was, or where he disappeared to. And I absolutely have no idea what was making that terrible growling noise. But I'm thankful I didn't find out. I've taken some time off to clear my head. I hope it'll do me some good. And once I get back to work, I think I'll be taking the stairs from now on.